Hello, this is Mr. Maximus Film. I'm doing an album review today of Blind Face's first and only album. So, first, last album, Blind Faith, released 1969. And uh, this is part of me trying to get back into the swing of things. I'm really sorry for the in um, the incohesiveness, the uh, lack of a schedule with my videos. I'm going to try to get back to doing at least one review a week. Um, and I'm sorry for the lack of videos that have been put up in the past three months or so. Um, but I've been really stagnant with that. Uh, but this is, the, this is, I'm going to try to get back, back into the swing of things. Uh, and I've been wanting to review this album since I bought it in October. Um, and it's Blind Faith's self-titled album. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, Blind Faith is a super group, um, composed of members of Cream and Traffic. So you have uh, Eric Clapton and Ginger Baker from Cream, of course, af shortly after the uh, d um, dissolve of Cream. And then you have Steve Winwood and Rick Gretsch from Traffic. And this album, for me, is truly interesting. This is a very interesting album because it truly does sound like, in my opinion, the fusion between the two bands. You know, you got the jazziness in some cases with the traffic in there, and you also have the psychedelic blues of Cream, which creates a very interesting combination. The problem with it is, and the problem that most people have with this album is, it's very incohesive. The flow on this album is lacking. Um, this album does not flow as a package really well. But it does have some, have some great moments from Eric Clapton and Steve Winwood. I love Steve Winwood on this album. His vocals are very soulful as per usual. I'm not a huge fan of Steve, Winwood, uh, Steve Winwood's solo career, but he does a really nice job on this album. His vocals are very powerful, um, particularly on uh, Can't, not Can't, Can't Find My Way Home um, and Had to Cry Today. Those two songs he sings particularly well. Of course, Eric Clapton has some great moments uh, on uh, Had to Cry Today. That riff is amazing. Uh, I love that riff. And uh, he has some really cool funky moments on, uh, same with uh, Stephen Woodwood's, Steve Winwood's organ. Ah, sorry, I can't talk. Steve Winwood's organ on uh, Do What You Like, but I'll get into that later. So there's lots of great moments, which makes this a very compelling record to listen to. If you like Eric Clapton or you like Cream, it's a very compelling record to listen to. Um, and it, the, for me, the album does have this sort of free-form attitude, despite, you know, the music not being so um, cohesive and uh, running together very well. The album does kind of carry this sort of hippie, freeform '60s atmosphere, in my opinion, uh, that go throughout the that goes throughout the entire thing, um, and that's why I think really does eventually tie all the songs together. With that being said, these songs are great tunes. Uh, "Had to Cry Today" is probably my favorite on the album, starting right off the bat. Great starter song. It's it's long, but it's not too long. It can um, it holds my interest for the entire eight minutes or so. Uh, you know, great riff, like I said again, really nice blues riff, really nice drumming from Ginger Baker. Ginger Baker's a fantastic drummer. Um, and like I said, soulful, powerful, direct vocals from Steve Winwood, which really propelled us on into a very high standard. Um, Can't Find My Way Home. The seg between uh, Had to Cry Today and Can't Find My Way Home is probably the be best uh, transition um, in the entire album. There's not a transition, but just the whole, you know, after that powerful blues bass had to cry today, and then the soft, gentle acoustic of uh, Can't Find My Way Home is really astounding how they do that really well. And uh, Can't Find My Way Home is beautiful, beautiful falsetto from Steve Winwood. Great acoustic guitar. Nice little um, uh, kind of springy sort of drumming, light drumming from Ginger Baker that works really nice. Another great song. Um, well, I'll write. It's an okay song. That's probably one of the more jazzy songs. Uh, features more piano from Steve Winwood, who's also a great keyboard um, player. Um, it, it's not really noted. It's, it's a cool song. It, it won't hold your attention for that long. 
um, than uh, Presence of the Lord, which is the song that everybody tends to talk about from this album, along with Can't Find My Way Home. I think it's a bit overrated, maybe. Um, it's a good song. I'm not going to say it's bad. It's just I've heard it too many times. I've heard it on the radio a lot. It's probably their most prominent song. But the part I do like about that song is the middle, where the guitar solo from Eric Clapton comes in. You know, it's just this funky, so wow, wow. It's really cool. Um, I really like Eric Clapton on this album. Um, so that's a really awesome moment. And you know the the chorus for uh, the chorus section, Steve Winwood does another good vocal delivery. It's just not as powerful, in my opinion, uh, than some of his other stuff. Like on "Had to Cry Today," "Sea of Joy," um, really, that's the song where they really use studio effects to their advantage. Lots of echo and you know a really cool little intricate riff in there by Eric Clapton. Um, sometimes Steve Winwood's vocals can get pretty intense on that song and a bit. Yeah, harsh. Not harsh, but a bit hard to listen to. Just a little too, I don't know, compact or, or whatever, intense. And then, of course, the song that everybody tends to bag on this album is Do What You Like, which is a 15-minute jam. Um, I will admit this probably uh, used to fill up space because the group was new and fresh and they didn't have a lot of material. And... Um, uh, to fill an album, so they kind of did this jam, which is composed by Steve, uh, sorry, Ginger Baker, um, and features a solo from each of the band members. So it has the opening section, which is probably the strongest section in the entire song, is of course the vocal section. You know, just kind of these nonsensical lyrics, you know, kind of telling off this girl, actually. And then, you know, gets into this really nice keyboard solo, that's probably my other favorite moment on, on the thing. It's a nice keyboard solo from Steve Winwood, which is really funky, really psychedelic, really reminiscent of the psychedelia, psychedelia era, which um, era which was kind of fizzling at the time. Eric Clapton, like uh, like I said, has a good uh, guitar solo, not as good as some of the stuff uh, earlier in the album, like the presence of uh, of the Lord solo, um, and. Uh, then a bass, and then it kind of just kind of crumbles. The entire song kind of fizzles out and gets into the rhythm, more rhythmic section featuring uh, Rick uh, Gretsch, I believe. I can never remember his name. Rick Gretsch, um, who does this kind of weird bass thing that doesn't really leave an impression. Then Ginger Baker has another, you know, five minute drum solo, which I'm not all. I think Ginger Baker is a fantastic uh, drumist. Uh, but I have never been a huge fan of his drum solos. They just go on for way too long without anything happening. That's just my opinion. You might disagree. But the, it's the probably for the next five, ten minutes after uh, Eric Clapton's guitar solo, the whole song kind of fizzles out and just gets boring. So it is a weak point. But overall... With all the tracks being said and all the weak points being put out, this is an interesting album. This is an interesting musical experiment. It's an interesting uh, mix of all these different uh, people that uh, work well in some moments and don't work well in some moments. Um, but this is one of the three periods of Eric Clapton that I like. I like, of course, Cream, Blind Faith, and Derek and the Dominoes. Those are the only times when Eric Clapton was any good. Um... But there you go. Uh, I would give this album a 7 out of 10, just because of the spotty moments that I mentioned before. Still a good album. Recommend picking up if you're a fan of Eric Clapton, if you haven't heard this album, uh, or a fan of Steve, uh, Steve Winwood or Cream or any of that. Uh, this is pretty much an essential album for those people, and I'm one of them. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting, very, you know, very good album. Uh, 7 out of 10. Pretty good score. And uh, this is Mr. Maximus Film. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to be trying to do the wall review pretty soon um, this weekend. And uh, I look forward to doing that. And uh, I have some things to say about the wall. Not bad, not good, but you, know, you guys will see. And uh, I'll see you guys later.